Hey, what's up, Musers? This is John at muse for You, and in today's video, I think it's been an, a long-awaited video. Uh, I'm gonna go over the differences between adaptive design and responsive uh, web design. Yeah, so adaptive web design and responsive web design. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me, you know, uh, is Adobe Muse responsive? Um, Adobe Muse is not responsive. It actually works uh, with adaptive design. So. I'm going to go over the differences in this video. It shouldn't be a, a fairly long video or too long of a video, um, but I'll just explain the difference, differences between adaptive uh, web design and responsive web design. So uh, if we go to the web here and with responsive web design, um, it, it is a trend now with web design because you want your website to look good on mobile, um, but I will go over uh, the pros and cons of each and why both work and um, kind of the differences and just so you can see f for yourself like what what each one does so <clears throat> this is the uh, one of the most popular popular uh, they're called boilerplates so a lot of responsive design is uh, done with code so um, so you would need to know a bit of code to do a responsive website uh, Adobe has a program called reflow that does responsive design um, but you still kind of need to know a bit of code uh, to kind of enter into that whole world of designing a site that's responsive with code. Uh, but this is a boilerplate. Like if you just wanted to do a website just with code, um, you could download this boilerplate and it is responsive. So like if you, you know, responsive design, the way it works is that if you make the browser smaller or bigger, um, everything changes to fit that browser width. So on a mobile device, because it's thinner, you're gonna see the website like this, how it is here. And if you're on a tablet, it'll look you know, something like this, a little bit wider. So you can see like as you change the browser width, it responds to the browser width. And you know, this works great on, it looks great on mobile, tablet, and you know, desktop. It's just, it changes for those devices. Uh, the other one is Bootstrap. You might have heard of Bootstrap. Um, again, it's it's code. Uh, you can download it and you can um, you can build a website if you know HTML5 and CSS or CSS3. Um, and again, this is responsive as well. And you can see when you change the browser width, um, everything changes with it, and the images um, change as well. And they kind of stack on top of each other. Very nice and. Uh, yeah, you can download that and work with that. And there, then there's Foundation, uh, Zerb Foundation. This is another popular one. Uh, I would say Bootstrap and Zerb Foundation are the two, probably two most popular uh, boilerplates um, for uh, web uh, responsive web design. And the reason they're popular is because if you go into Bootstrap, um, it actually has, um, it shows you how to how to use the whole template to create a responsive website, which is great. The documentation is amazing. And it's just like, you could just start using it to make a responsive uh, website. And it works like a grid, like responsive templates work like a grid. So like, um, if you wanted, let's say, you had two columns, and when you shrink your browser down, you wanted those two columns to be underneath each other, you would set like, uh, you would you would use 50% and 50%. Um, which is like two columns or you would use if you wanted three columns you'd do 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent or four 25 percent 25 percent so that if your browser is wider you can have four columns and then when you shrink it down those columns go underneath each other or you know or if you have like see my voice just crack, uh, or if you have like three those go underneath each other uh, I'm not gonna go too much into detail with this because you know obviously you're probably using Adobe Muse because you don't want to get so much into the code and and I'm just trying to give a quick overview of um, those uh, of the responsive templates and how it works so yeah um, we're in bootstrap right now they have great documentation if you did want to learn about responsive design they have really good documentation on how to use the uh, the bootstrap uh, template here so as you can see it's bootstrap is built on responsive 12 column grids layouts and components very good and Zerb is very similar um, they're just a bit different. They also have great documentation. Um, I think here in the docs section, yeah, they just have really great documentation on how to use it and everything. And, you know, they have their differences, but they pretty much kind of go f for the same thing, which is creating a responsive website and making it easy to uh, code and use their templates as a base to 
uh, to work and code a responsive website. So those are, you know, the, the three different, I would say, major templates and boilerplates for HTML5 and CSS3, CSS and yeah, CSS3 um, responsive design. So, you know, we have the boilerplate, bootstrap and Zurb foundation. I got to go back to the home page here. Yep. So you can see these are all responsive. You shrink the browser and it's responsive. So that's the way responsive design works. Um, so I'm trying to think if I want to get more, like show you more of the code. But I mean, if we if we go, yeah, like if we go here and we it works with div classes as well. I mean, if you if you haven't really studied code, I mean, it's not going to mean much to you. But, you know, if you wanted to check it out, you just go. I'll leave the, the links in the description area below so you can check them out. So that's basically an overview of responsive design. Um, you know, it works with classes and columns and, you know, and things like that. Like, um, I'm trying not to get too deep into it because I know it could make a really long video if I try to explain everything about uh, responsive design. But um, the other thing, it's like responsive design works with media qu queries. So like um, the way these templates work, like if I if I make this smaller, there's actually code that's telling um, the browser, like when the browser gets, let's say to 960 pixels wide, turn into like a, like make everything um, responsive, like change the, the layout of the design. And when I get even smaller, let's say 370 or 390, you know, turn it into more of like a mobile design. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comments section. Uh, I'd be happy to clarify, but it is a lot of information that I'm trying to go over in a quick video uh, about responsive design. But I, yeah, I just do want to give you a quick overview um, so you, you know kind of the differences. Um, but basically, yeah, that's it for uh, responsive design. Uh, it is a trend and Google also looks for it um, to rank your website. Like it looks now to make sure that your website is uh, mobile friendly. So you definitely, either way you go, you either want a responsive or an adaptive website so that you rank good in Google and that you pass the Google mobile friendly test. And I'll go over that uh, later in this video as well. Um, so adaptive and responsive design both pass, pass the test. That's why if you, you know, with Adobe Muse, if you're using it, uh, you will pass the Google mo mobile friendly test because it is mobile friendly when you design for a mobile device. So, okay, so now that I've gone over responsive design, I'm gonna go over the way Adobe Muse works and it is adaptive design. So like if you've been using Adobe Muse, you'll notice it has desktop, tablet, and mobile. You can design uh, your site for the three different devices. Um, so if I go to my Muse for You Shop website, uh, museforyoushop.com, and I right click and I click on inspect element, and I go to the head tag right up here. And let me just uh, bring this down here. Yeah just some stuff there. Um, and I go to the head tag. And if we look here where it says link media, um, it has only screen and max device width 370 pixels. So if the device has a max width of 370, which is most uh, mobile devices, um, it's going to go to the phone version of the website. So it's going to go to museforyoushop.com slash phone slash index dot HTML. And that's the phone version of my website. And if the max device width is 960 pixels, which is most tablets, um, it's going to go to the tablet version of my Adobe Muse website. Um, so that's the way adaptive design works. It looks at the width of the device and it says, okay, if the device width is, is the max is like 370, then let's use the phone version of the website. If it's 960, we're going to use the tablet version of the website. So, that's basically it for adaptive design. It, it adapts to the device that you're using and it's still mobile friendly and it is tablet friendly. It's just not the same as like, you know, if you change the browser with, um, it doesn't change with the browser. You see, like it just, you know, it doesn't, doesn't quite do that. So um, yeah, that's kind of how that works. And I'll open up Adobe Muse and yeah, we have it here. So if I go to file, or let's wait till it loads a little bit. Yeah, I'll close this here. I go to file, new site, and I click OK. We can see we have the desktop version, we have the tablet version, and we have the phone version. 
So if we create a website for these different devices, our website will look great or what you know, your website will look great on these devices. And if we go to the Google, I'll just type in the Google mobile friendly test and you can test your website to see if it's mobile friendly. And I'll just do HTTP muse for you shop.com. And you know, my muse for you shop site is designed with, um, with Adobe muse. So we're testing it now. Okay. And as we can see, um, awesome, this page is mobile friendly. So it goes to my mobile friendly website and it passes the test. So you can test your website and see if it's mobile friendly. And yeah, Google now looks for this to rank your site higher in the search engines. So, you know, if, if let's say somebody's in the same, you know, field as you and their site isn't as mobile friendly as yours, you might rank higher in the search engines than that other website. So, you know, these are important factors to look at when you're designing your website. And if you wanted to, let's say, um, have a similar idea to the like 12 column grid that's in in a lot of uh, responsive websites. Um, just a quick plug, uh, Muse Resources has the 960 grid and the 1200 grid. So when you're designing your website, you can actually uh, download these templates and use the grids to to um, to line up all your elements so that they look really good. Um, these templates are great and it's a great yeah, resource. Um, I'll leave a link or yeah, it's museresources.com and it's in the template section and he's, he's created these great uh, templates to to create your website. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, I've covered everything uh, that uh, regarding or mostly everything regarding um, responsive design and adaptive design. Uh, with responsive design, I didn't quite get too too detailed with it because um, again, I'm trying to keep it so that you know you can create websites without code. Um, I have gone into the whole. Uh, responsive um, templates and have worked with them and um, yeah the bo uh, bootstrap and they they're both great I've worked with bootstrap and they're both great templates for that but if, if you are wanting to create a website without code Adobe Muse is a great alternative in the sense that it still passes the mobile friendly test and it's adaptive design it's not quite responsive but it works great to create um, your website and the other thing with adaptive design one of the pros about it that I like is that um, you can style your your mobile website however you'd like so you can actually change and this is actually a great point like you can actually make the the user experience a little bit different on a mobile device uh, with Adobe Muse because you can literally create a whole new website on your mobile device obviously you'll want it to kind of match your desktop and your whole theme of your website but you can make the whole user experience totally different on a mobile website or on a tablet uh, device um, or yet yeah, mobile device or a tablet device simply by um, creating the websites in Adobe Muse and you, you can just do something totally creative and you know for the different devices you're not you're not limited to um, the way the template or your images are on a desktop site and you know with res with responsive your desktop and your tablet and your mobile will look fairly similar because it's using the same images and text and you know the same kind of overall feel and idea is just condensing them and moving them around so that it looks great on all devices but with adaptive design you literally have the freedom to recreate any or you know to create uh you know something new for a tablet and something new for a phone or you know for mobile or your phone device um so yeah that's just a quick overview overview um you know, adaptive does has has does have a lot of pros, and you know, responsive has a lot of things too that are great too. But um, just a quick overview, I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to hear from you. Your comments, your you know, what do you think about this? And have you worked with responsive design versus adaptive design, and and things like that? I personally think Adobe Muse is great just in the sense of web design in general because you have so much freedom, so much creativity that you can do with it and you're not limited to, to knowing code. And with widgets now, you can do so much. Like, you know, widgets are code, but they let you design 
uh, your website without having to spend hours learning the code. And the same with Adobe Muse, you don't need to spend hours learning code to create the website that you've always dreamed of, that you've always envisioned. You can just open up Adobe Muse and start creating your website. So yeah, I, I could say a lot more about that, but I think I've um, kind of hashed that enough. Um, so yeah, just leave your comments in the comments area below. Uh, check out museforyoushop.com. I have great widgets there. Uh, check out my Patreon page uh, if you like my videos and subscribe if, if you like my videos. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. Leave your comments, feedback, anything in the comment section below. There's links down there below in the description area. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.